Hi everyone. Uh, this is a video for your know, Pride Ireland 2021, uh, and I'm Steph McCarley. I'm going to go and talk to you a little bit about um, stuff that doesn't get talked about too much, but is actually quite important, uh, which is autistic inertia. What on earth is autistic inertia? It's a inertia is a word that has been borrowed from physics really um and it's to do with movement and the, the this inclination of things to move so basically um it's how much something resists being moved being sp sped up or being slowed down or having its direction changed um and you know you can kind of imagine the idea of like uh you know a heavy steel ball sitting on the ground you know you need to put effort in to start it moving but once it starts rolling um it becomes easier to continue that going the inertia exists both in that steel ball resisting you starting it moving but also once it starts rolling um in how hard it is then to get it to stop um, or change direction. Um, so that's the kind of idea behind uh, what inertia is. The real question then is what's autistic inertia because we're not just, <laughs> we're not steel balls. Uh, okay, autistic inertia. Um, for autistic people, it, it, it's kind of taking the idea and translating it into kind of like, the autistic experience it's about the trouble it takes to start the task uh, or end the task or to transition between tasks so you could consider that be kind of like changing direction if you like um or even dealing with things like a, an unexpected change of circumstances and things like that um names inertia can be linked to or be essentially equivalent to um, a variety of different things and people will use different kinds of terms that means essentially autistic inertia or something similar to it and some examples of that are executive dysfunction um, inability to transition um, that's a common one that gets talked about with kids sort of in school when they're finishing one class and they have to move to a different room and they've struggled to sort of pack everything away mentally and then move into another place to do something different. And the ability to initiate is another uh, phrase that gets used quite often. And that idea of being struggling to start something, um, <laughs> uh, that's actually quite a common experience. And so a lot goes on behind that and, and the reasons why, but obviously it's not something we can cover in detail on this video, but really they're, uh, they're pretty much amount to the same thing. It's this difficulty with changing from being in this state to being in that state, whether it be not doing something to doing something, doing something to not doing something, going from doing this to going to do that. Um, and it's associated with some other terms. Um, Hyperfocus, for example, which is reasonably familiar i think for most people who are autistic the idea of hyper focus that you can become utterly engrossed in a single one task not notice even the passage of time can be added for hours on end to levels that people find just unbelievable my current record is 22 hours straight <laughs> um not going to go into the details of how that came about but let's just say i had trouble initiating the task and then found myself facing a deadline <clears throat> Um, monotropism, which is a what is a fancy word for you, monotropism, what on earth is that? Monotropism is really about that inclination to focus on a single task, but not just focusing on a single task, but focusing on one thing rather than being able to switch channels, if you like, between multiple tasks or kind of switch easily from one thing to another. So multitasking, you could say in one, some way is going to be the opposite of um, monotropism. But like in the literature, they use the term polytropism. 
but it's about focusing on an idea or a thing so it's more of a mental process than a physical thing um and pda uh, the horribly named pda um the, <laughs> that's it's such a popular subject in the past couple of years um it, really it's about demand avoidance um and what's significant here is that the, people often feel like they're de avoiding a demand or are actually avoiding a demand because it's actually very difficult to transition from task to task or to initiate a new task. Um, and things like that are, can be quite common uh, also for people with sort of ADD as well. So it's not just, you know, some autistic only thing. Um, and, you know, it's something that can affect people with a variety of different um, states of being, shall we say. Um, so, you know, this is not something that's kind of like one discrete little idea that only affects autistic people. Um, and, you know, that can have a variety of causes. Um, uh, it could simply be just the way you cope with daily life and its complexities. Uh, but it can also be as a result of trauma or distress, you know, situational distress or kind of like a long term or kind of past trauma. It can be as a result of feeling invalidated and a sense of inability or incapability that's kind of been sort of you've had you've internalized from being constantly invalidated. The sense that you're not able or maybe you will fail or it'll be too difficult. Um, Again, the sense of kind of risk associated with that starting something or or, or changing uh, direction um, and it can also simply be just down to distraction and again this kind of ties into the ADD side of things a bit um, that uh, you know it can be very difficult to just get in and focus on one thing if things are constantly distracting you and that can be thoughts as well as you know your environment so And uh, this is really, in some ways, the most important part of it, particularly for people who don't experience that sense of inertia to, to get their heads around is the fact that it's uh, quite often something that you actually want to do um, or need to do. And you actually have a desire there. You sense that urgency and you want it to happen, but you actually find yourself um, unable to initiate the process. Uh, and it can actually make you feel like a failure, it can make you feel incapable, and um, you know it can be horribly frustrating and, and depressing to kind of literally sit there, and, and it happens all too often where you will find yourself literally in a room with everything you need in front of you, and literally unable to just start that process. When it eventually does happen, for whatever reason, and you do start. It becomes perfectly easy and you get the thing done in two minutes boom, and you go oh why couldn't i have just started it that can actually be a very demoralizing experience and it's something that's actually worth being a little bit compassionate about when you see somebody struggle with something like that because it can look inexplicable because it can be literally a straightforward thing that needs to be done um and it can be very hard to get your head around why the person just doesn't start doing it um so a little bit of compassion um from other people and a little bit of understanding makes a huge difference to uh, uh, making the experience of inertia um, a little bit easier to cope with, you know. So stay on the subject. What can you do to help? <laughs> um, understanding about inertia, understanding what inertia is like and what it involves is a huge step because it is such a personal and internal thing. It's completely invisible. Um, and it, the reason for it can be something that literally the person can't even explain to you because in a lot of ways it is kind of inexplicable it just doesn't seem to make sense so being a little bit compassionate helps it helps to say look okay i know it's okay don't worry about it um take your time if you want me to do something to help let me know giving people time to transition, give people time to internalize the task and the steps to it and feel like they can actually make that move. Um, and also helping to support the process of initiation, uh, which doesn't mean, you know, here, I'll do it for you or I'll start you off, whatever. 
Um, it's something which is very personal and very situational, and sometimes it can be a trial and error thing. But um, uh, often people have found that what makes a big difference is somebody who's kind of got the feel for them, kind of knowing how to just give them the little nudge and just start the ball rolling. If you think of that big heavy steel ball again, it's just enough to get that ball start rolling. Once it starts rolling, it's easy to keep it going. Um, so a little visual image for you there. Um, okay, hope that was um, useful and interesting. Thanks for listening.